I will never forgive him. I was at the height of my anger at the sight of the woman crying in front of me and continually apologizing to me. I was determined to make the person who had caused my parents so much trouble in the past and had been successfully forgiven each time pay for his sins once and for all. I am Celine, 29 years old, and I have just given birth to a child with my husband Alfred, and I am now a housewife. We were colleagues in an international company, and Alfred works in a department that requires him to travel abroad frequently. Therefore, from the beginning of our marriage, we both agreed that when I gave birth, I would go back to my hometown until things settled down. My parents' home is a train right away, and I had talked to them about it beforehand, and they had given their consent. I'm sorry I couldn't be with you. I'll find time to come see you. Also, about your brother. He's out of the family home and he's married, so I don't think it will happen again. My parents have told me that they won't let that man near their house while I'm there. As I was packing for my trip home, Alfred spoke to me worriedly. I have an older brother, three years older than me, and our relationship is not a good one. Ever since we were children, my older brother, who was bigger than me, used to treat me as if I were his errand boy and would often give me a slight poke if I didn't do his bidding. I was small compared to my brother, so I would fall down if he gave me a light poke, and I was even afraid of him squatting over my big body. However, when my brother entered junior high school, I realized that something was wrong with him because of the words of his friends and teachers, and I discussed my feelings about him with my parents behind my brother's back. Although I had told my parents repeatedly about my brother's attitude, this was the first time they put a lock on my room. My brother was either too busy with his junior high school life, or he had lost interest in me, but he gradually became less and less involved in my life. However, when he entered high school, he started behaving badly, causing problems, and my parents would often go to the other party or his school to apologize. I got caught taking money out of mom's purse, but I told her it was your fault, so you need to cover for me. One day, I was going to the bathroom when I ran into my brother. When he saw me there, he smirked and told me to take the blame. No way! If you apologize properly, she'll forgive you. Shut up and do what I say. My brother tried to hit me for arguing with him, but at the time I was learning judo because of a certain anime I admired, so I was able to fend him off and keep my balance. He made a pretty loud noise and went face first into the floor. He quickly regrouped and came at me again. But because of the loud noise, my parents rushed over to see what was going on. George tried to make me take the blame for stealing money, and when he tried to hit me, I dodged him and he fell down. I explained the whole story. My brother refuted my words, but my parents believed me because of the situation and his behavior. They grounded him from school for a while, gave him no allowance, and took away his cell phone and banned him from contacting me. My brother seemed to be very angry at me for this, but my father strongly reprimanded him, saying that if he kept this up, he would get kicked out of the house. I went to college in a rural area and left home, got a job in the same area, and married Alfred. Alfred knows this story and has actually met my brother. Alfred was worried that my brother might do something to me again as I was with child. I told Alfred that there was nothing to worry about because of what my parents said, but the real reason was Alfred's appearance. Alfred is of mixed race, he is a bit bigger than my brother, who is a bit stouter, and to be honest, he gives a pretty scary first impression, and he actually works out a lot, which my brother would have never been able to match. He only attacked me because he knew that I was small and female, and that I would not be able to fight back, so he would not even try to fight me now in Alfred's presence. Typical, the cowardly type who changes his attitude depending on the person he is dealing with. I was afraid to tell Alfred, who looks scary, but is actually very sensitive, so I didn't tell him the truth. A few days later, I was back at my parents' house for a trip home as planned. I was talking to my mother, who came to pick me up, and she explained what had happened with my brother. My parents had demanded that my brother not come to my parents' house while I was there, and in exchange, he demanded he get some of the property that my parents own. My parents balked at this, but agreed to it for my safety and security. I'm sorry for making this decision on my own, but I wanted to be sure after all we went through when you were a student. I felt bad for all they did for me, and I apologize and thank them for the burden I had placed on my parents. It is possible that Leah may come to the house when she needs something. Leah is a quiet person and doesn't seem to be a bad person, and she was just here yesterday, 
so I don't think she'll be back anytime soon. She also gave me this additional explanation. Leah is my brother's wife, whom I have met only once, and she is a quiet woman with a soft demeanor. My mother had cleaned my room so that I could use it, but I noticed that my beloved low table was missing. Mom, did you take the low table that was here somewhere? Oh, sorry. I'm using it in the bedroom. Do you want me to get it? I can get it myself. After having such a conversation, I went to my parents' bedroom, lifted up the low table I wanted a little, and found an outlet tap that looked a little strange. What is it? I stared at the outlet tap and realized that it looked exactly like an outlet tap type wire tap I had seen on a TV special before. I immediately took out my phone and searched for it and found the exact same thing being sold as a listening device, which made my blood run cold and I rushed to my mother. I explained the situation to my mother in a whisper and asked her to check the actual device in her bedroom where she looked pale and frightened. She seemed to be wondering the same thing and told me that she had an idea. The idea was to put a flyer over the wiretap and blow air over it so that if the culprit heard the noise, he would think it was a malfunction and come to check on it. Although she had a pretty good idea of who the culprit was, for some reason my mother seemed to be having a bit of fun working the case. For the next two days, we enjoyed putting up flyers and letting the wind blow over them whenever we felt like it. Then, in the evening, Leah came to visit my parents' house. My husband is away on a business trip, so I'm a little lonely. I was wondering if you would be willing to have dinner with me. We had no reason to refuse Leah's offer, so we welcomed her into our home and had dinner together. However, when my father and Leah's drinking progressed unexpectedly, my mother suggested, You seem a little drunk today. Why don't you stay the night? I put my drunken father on the living room sofa and told my mother and Leah not to drink too much because they were still going to drink, and I went back to my room first. While I was killing time by reading comic books, I got a message from my mother, so I tiptoed to my parents' bedroom. I peeked into the bedroom through the slightly open door, and sure enough, there was Leah, just fumbling around in the electrical outlet. What are you doing in there? Uh, it, it's not what you think. Then what is it? Is this what you're looking for? My mother and I knew that Leah was the only one who could bug the place, so we intentionally created an opening and let Leah through the bedroom, expecting that she would surely come to see the bug when she came to visit. Leah jumped up at the sound of my voice and began to explain in a hoarse voice, but when she saw the bug I had given her, she dropped her shoulders in disappointment. Did you put this here? Why? Yes, I did. I'm sorry. I know it's impossible to apologize and be forgiven, but all I can do is apologize. You don't have to apologize, just answer the question. When I questioned her, Leah glanced at me as if she was concerned about the bug in my hand. Are you concerned about this by any chance? It's turned off. When I told her this, Leah began to cry quietly as if she was relieved. My mother calmed Leah down, and my father, who had woken up at some point, joined us to listen to the situation. My husband had always said that your parents had favored Celine since she was a child, and that they would make sure that she would get the larger share of the inheritance. So that's why he asked you to give him the property in exchange for staying away from the family home. What does this have to do with wiretaps and the fact that my parents were going to give him whatever inheritance he wanted? My husband told me that the decision would most likely take place in the bedroom or living room, and asked me to bug the place. I refused at first, but then he began to hit me when I didn't do what he said. Oh no. The story told by Leah was shocking, but on the other hand, given my brother's character, it was believable. Leah is still crying and apologizing to us. I was so upset at the sight of her that I said to myself, I'll never forgive him. I then thought of a plan to punish my brother. Before that, I asked Leah if she wanted to divorce my brother. I really want to leave him, but, but my husband is in charge of all the money, and I can't survive if I leave him. Leah was shivering as she told me what she really thought, and my father was even more furious than I was when he saw it. Did you bring a new wiretap? Please, plant that and go home. Don't worry about the money. Take this money and go to the hospital tomorrow and get a checkup. I then told everyone the plan, and Leah planted the bug and left our home with her head down. 
And then, after everyone followed the plan, it was decided that my brother would be invited to my parents' house for the weekend. On the day of the operation, my brother, Leah, myself, and my parents were gathered in the living room. I explained to Celine that I was going to give you a piece of real estate. I thought it was time for you to decide which property you'd like because of that. Celine, it's been a long time. I know your selfishness got us into this mess, but I'm grateful for it now. I already know what I want. A mountain on the edge of the next town over. Give me that mountain. My brother was quick to specify the mountain that's been passed down from generation to generation on our father's side. But that mountain... What? We agreed you'd give me whatever I want, right? You're not going to refuse and give it to Celine, are you? Of course not. The scene was quickly getting worse, and my brother started grinning at the sight of it. Then it's settled. Get on with the process. I don't want to have anything to do with this family that loves my sister so much. My brother left with Leah with a triumphant smile on his face. My parents immediately asked a lawyer to make a living donation to my brother for the mountain in question, and the name change for the property went smoothly. About a week later, the lawyer informed me that the procedure had been completed. I contacted Lear to let her know that the procedure was completed. The name change has been completed. If you want to get a divorce, now is the time. As soon as I told Leah that, she got a lawyer immediately and filed for divorce against my brother and demanded alimony. Because of the circumstances, Leah took refuge at a friend's house and she proceeded with the divorce proceedings from there. My brother refused to pay alimony at first, but finally he agreed to Leah's request and the divorce was finalized a few weeks later. During the divorce, my parents and I had decided to move to the area where I was living with Alfred and sell the family home. A few weeks later, I received a call on my cell phone from my brother. When I answered it, he was terribly agitated. Where the hell are you? Where are mom and dad? He asked angrily. What happened? I asked back, and my brother quickly started explaining his situation. Apparently, my brother wanted to use the mountain he inherited to pay his alimony to Leah. However, it turned out that the mountain was of no use at all, and in fact, the maintenance costs and property taxes would make him lose money. He tried to question our parents about this, but he could not locate them, so he contacted me. As I listened to my brother's story, I was pleased with the success of the operation. After Leah bugged the house and left, my parents held a conversation in the bedroom. Let's give George whatever piece of property he wants. As long as Celine gets that mountain, that's all that matters. Yes, the mountain is the most valuable, and it would be worth more than all the others combined. And so on and so forth. Incidentally, this was a complete lie, as the mountain had been passed down from generation to generation, and it was worthless so it could not be sold, which was a constant source of headache for our family. I had been discussing with my parents about whether or not I could dispose of the mountain, and if I couldn't, I would inherit it, and they would give me a larger share of the inheritance to pay for the maintenance and taxes. But the wiretap made me think that my brother could somehow inherit it, so I asked my parents to put on a show in front of the wiretap. And my brother, who heard the conversation through the wiretap, designated the mountain as the property that he wanted to inherit, just as I had intended. And before my brother knew the true value of the mountain, Leah filed for divorce and my brother believed his parents' story and accepted Leah's demand, believing that he would get a large sum of money. I was quite surprised at how well everything went according to plan. Hello, so do you know where mom and dad are? If I did know, I wouldn't tell you. If they didn't tell you where they are, it means they want to cut ties. Who the hell do you think you're talking to? Do you have a problem with my wife? When I talked back to my brother, who raised his voice threateningly, Alfred, who was listening to it over the speaker, spoke to my brother. Alfred's voice instantly made my brother sound deflated. Are we done? I'm hanging up now, I said, and ended the call. I reported this to my parents, who decided to communicate with my brother through a lawyer from now on. My brother ended up with a large debt for the alimony to Leah and for the maintenance of the mountain and property taxes, but he was stuck in a situation where he had no way to escape bankruptcy and was in a state of limbo. Fortunately, my brother doesn't even know where I live, so he won't be able to locate me. By the way, they said they would not help, but my parents have paid a portion of my brother's alimony to Leah. 
I'm so sorry for what my son did. I can't apologize enough. No, I'm really sorry that I did something so inhumane as wiretapping. I can't thank Celine enough for giving me the opportunity to get out of that near brainwashing, and the two of you for helping me financially. Leah bowed her head to us with a clear expression on her face after being freed from my brother's cruelty. Afterwards, Leah contacts us once in a while and tells us that she is living her new life with the help of her brother and his wife. She wondered why she did not seek help earlier, and she has been volunteering her time to counsel women who are thinking of divorcing their husbands, but are hesitant to do so. My parents bought a condominium near our house, and I enjoy raising my child by inviting my mother to my home and having her teach me how to raise my children. Alfred is also happy that my parents have moved, saying that he can go on business trips with peace of mind, knowing that they are close by since he is often away from home.